It's funny, people ask me how long I've been playing poker. I say longer than these guys have been alive, plus 40. I just came from a card playing family. You know, everybody in my family loves to play cards um, and games. You know, we're just, everybody in my family is kind of, you know, pretty smart, well read, and that kind of thing. And so we just like those kinds of games always. And, um, you know, I was a kid, I'd be playing, you know, Canasta and Gin Rummy and all this stuff. And I played poker all my life. And when I was a young actor, a lot of the actors, um, you know, we'd, we'd, we'd play gin. Then we used to play gin a lot more than poker. Uh, you know, to see who would eat sometimes. You know, you'd be playing, you'd be playing to eat. I remember um, Scott Wilson, you know, who was in Walking Dead. Well, he isn't now, he's been killed. But uh, of course, he was in Cold Blood. He told me a great story once. He said he was, uh, just before he did in Cold Blood, he was like pumping gas at a gas station. And uh, he was uh, hired by the director to do this phenomenal movie that everybody wanted to be able to. Richard Brooks uh, hired him. And he said he went to Vegas, he made $40,000. Now you have to remember, this is like in the 60s, $40,000, <laughs> like a guy pumping gas, like 40 million. Said, I did the movie, they gave him my paycheck on a Friday, I went right to Vegas, came back Monday, and I was pumping gas again. <laughs> have you ever had experiences like that in, in your earlier years? Well, I mean, I never, I never had 40,000 when I was in my uh, 20s, I can tell you that. I, you know, I was a theater actor, so I never had, I never did, I never made any money until I was in my 30s, which is why, I, I'm not sort of, I don't have a swell head about being successful because I wasn't successful until later in life and I had a pretty good chance of uh, growing up by then a little bit, a little bit. You know, I, I play in, in my business, in, in the film business, a lot of people, uh, some of them are very, very good players. I mean, look, Kevin Pollack, you know, went into, uh, what was it, like he came and went out 101st or whatever it was uh, a couple of years ago with a really bad beat, Queens against Queens and lost to the flush and, and so on. And, uh, you know, he's a wonderful tournament player. Uh, you know, Nick Cassavetes, Toby McGuire is a terrific player, you know, Norm McDonald. I mean, a lot, a lot of these guys are good players and they're good home game players. And we play home games where you want to have fun. And I always tell people, I said, listen, if you get the home game, you start getting it up where people are going to be losing a big, 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 big pot. It's not going to be fun anymore. I mean, it's fun to, you know, win within our range. But I see some of these games go crazy. I mean, I had a game that was... 2550 pot limit cap limit game. It sounds weird, but it was a game that had been around for years in Hollywood, and I inherited it from Vince Van Patten. I mean, I played with Vince and Mike Sexton. Andy Duke played at our game sometimes. A couple of times, Kathy Lieber dropped in. Uh, Dan Harrington played. You know, a lot of really you know, great, great poker players, and a lot of people you wouldn't know who are also terrific poker players, and a lot of good, uh, a lot of celebrities would play in it. You know, Ben Affleck played it, and so on. Toby played in it. Um, and the irony is. Uh, you'd be surprised. Uh, some of the amateurs could really hold their own. But then uh, my late mother was ill and I kind of stopped acting for a while and went back, took care of her and, you know, just played poker on the East Coast. And by the time I got back, that game had now gotten up where people are winning $100,000 pots and so on. And, and I said, you know, guys, uh, <laughs> you kind of, you run out of players when people have $100,000 pots. You just do it. You know, it's just, and when it's that, I don't think it's fun when you can lose a house in a night, you know? I mean, for some people, I guess it is, but not for me. Well, I'll tell you one of the great things about poker, and you mentioned golf, and it's interesting. I think golf is that way, too. I've always said that you can tell the content of a person's character on the golf course, because there are people who are just honorable people. They play their game, and there are other people, just you can just tell their attitude, so on. Same with poker. I mean, poker reveals a lot to you, not only about other people, but especially about yourself. There have been so many poker tournaments that I should have won where I shot myself in the foot. And I tell you, if I could give advice to anybody, I'd say just sit down with a good friend every single week and say, this is the problem with my game. Because I was talking to Barry Greenstein the other day and we were talking about running bad. And he said, yeah, running bad, playing bad. And I said, I couldn't agree with you more. Every time I bitch about running bad, it's because I'm playing bad. I'm just playing bad. I said, you know, everybody calls me and you get them James Woods. They call me because I was splashing chips around spewing chips, playing stupid hands, thinking I was clever, and of course, you know, people are gonna look you up. There's something odd about being asked to give romantic advice if, you, if you're I, um, because I'm, I, <laughs> I've certainly had my ups and downs in that department, but I guess if I were giving advice to the younger guys, I mean, because poker players can be a little socially awkward, I suppose, but I was always social awkward. I mean, I'm not a very good looking guy, and I was an actor, but I, you know, 
I think one of the reasons I may have been fortunate enough to enjoy the company of some really wonderful women in my life is, first of all, it's a tribute to my late mother. She was a remarkable person, uh, and I loved her with all my heart. My dad always said, you must respect women totally. He was wonderful to my mom and vice versa. They had a wonderful marriage. And I, uh, I've just always loved women, man. And I, if you love women and you're good to them, they'll really, I think, by and large, be good back. And you can complain that your wife or your girlfriend's acting a certain way, but, you know, usually, usually women, you know, act crazy if you make them act crazy. And I, I've been guilty of that, I have to say. So, in all honesty, if you want to, have a great time with a woman and really make sure it turns out great, then just treat her like a queen. And you know, good things should happen. And if they don't, then maybe your judgment was wrong, but usually you're the one messing it up. You know, women will do anything to make a guy sort of be a better man if you just let them.